And greetings, my friends, patriots, lovers of democracy, truth and justice, believers in peace, freedom, and the American way. Tom Hartman here with you. And uh, we're going to do a uh, meet your congressman, have a conversation with Mark. We, we Someday maybe we'll brand these things. But <laughs> Congressman Mark Pocan is with us today for the first hour. He'll be taking your calls. And he's in the studio with us. Yeah. Congressman, it's great having you in it's the It's great studio. to be here. I love your studio. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. It's a, we try to make it comfortable. No, this is awesome. <laughs> it seems to work well. So uh, if you have a question or a call for Congressman Pocan, our number is 202-809-9925. And, uh, and Chris will have that up on the screen, too. So give us a shout. So, Congressman, what is, uh, well, first of all, what's on your mind? I mean, I'd like to give the first 10 minutes, basically, to you to just rant on whatever you think sure. is the most important stuff going on. <clears throat> I'll tell you, I mean, I, I think what we're hearing the most from constituents on a couple of things. Uh, one is just this Muslim ban that, you know, they're trying to use their alternative facts to say it's not a ban on Muslims, but clearly that's the intention. And when they're talking about finding a path for maybe Christians from these countries, they've even made it worse, you know, when they start to explain that. Uh, we're hearing a lot about that. Uh, we're hearing a lot from people about specifically on the different appointees, but Betsy DeVos and Andy Puzder seem to be the top two that people are calling about. And Betsy DeVos, we know now there's two Republican senators that they're going to vote against. So there's potential uh, for that to really uh, have um, uh, an ability to kill it. Or Mike Pence might have to himself come in and be the deciding vote on that, which they, I, I don't know when that's which been Which he'll done. do. I mean, they, the, yeah. they, I mean they're they're blowing up rules left and right. Right. Well, rules. Well, this I, is, <laughs> what, what's that? We don't have those this is the come. Trump administration. Come on. We don't have those. And um, and I think just some of the executive orders this week, you know, looking, we're hearing there may be one today around uh, the religious liberty laws that allow people to discriminate. We're waiting to see if that's going to happen. Um, but there's just a lot to juggle every single day. And, you know, I think... Uh, what I'm hearing more than anything, and we're doing a live Facebook town hall tonight on our Facebook page uh, at, I think it's at 6.30 Central Standard Time. The Mark Pocan. Uh, the Rep Mark Pocan, Rep yeah. Mark Pocan yeah. Uh, Facebook page. Yeah, because so many people, I mean, I'll tell you, there's a lot of angst out there. No matter where I go, whether it's in an airport in Washington, D.C., whether it's back home in Wisconsin, anywhere else I've been in between, people just don't, they've got the, the angst and they want to do something. They're trying to figure out how to focus it. So we're trying to help do that. So we posted a video yesterday kind of explaining to people, um, you know, double down on the groups you care about. Pick your one or two or three issues that you think are most in jeopardy and, and volunteer and donate money to those causes because uh, that's where you can have the impact with our collective voices. Let's magnify our voices by working through those groups. And if they have a legal arm, all the better, right? Because legal challenges are going to help us, I think, even more than anything in these dark days. So we'll do what we can as the legislative arm of the resistance but we need everybody kind of magnifying their voices by working with those groups. And so we've been doing a lot of work around that because I think, you know, as you know, um, I think help, the more we can help people get organized and be more powerful, the more likely we are to stop a lot of these things from happening. Right. And, and, and a fine thing it is. Um, what's your best advice for how to uh, lobby? People have to lobby their senators right now, you know, with regard to all, to all this stuff. And, you know, there's a lot of people I was standing outside Chuck Schumer's house. I mean, yeah. these, these things are happening all over the country of, uh, you know, block the nominees, uh, stop the Supreme Court guy who, uh, you know, we discovered this morning when he was in high school, uh, in his prep school, while his mom was EPA chief, I think, while she was screwing up the EPA on behalf of Reagan. Um, he started the fascist fascism forever club at his high school. Oh, I get it. It was probably, you know, Bannon must be so proud. Yeah, I, it, was, <laughs> right. it was probably, you know, lighthearted and all that kind of stuff. You know, he thought a bunch of liberal professors will be, you know, will yeah, I can't I can't criticize him for that because I got kicked out of high school for publishing an alternative newspaper, you know, and yeah. and, and challenging the administration of my high school. I mean, I literally got kicked out of high school for that. And, and my dad was the guy who was printing it for me. And he was a conservative Republican. And I was taking all these anti-war stands. But he was like, oh, you're first amendment rights. How dare they? <laughs> like, wait a minute. You know, my dad who took me to the John Birch Society meeting. Oh no. Um, but, but he believed in freedom of speech, yeah. you know. So anyhow, what's the best way for people to log to lobby a senator? You're a member of the House of Representatives, a right. congressman, but uh, the Senate the Senate is where the, all the stuff, the buck stops. This is where stuff. the votes are happening right now on the confirmation. So, you know, people should uh, reach out to your uh, senator. Uh, the best thing you can do is uh, try to call them or uh, 
if you can uh, set up face-to-face -face meetings with the offices, um, you know, if you're back in district, because it's important that they're hearing from their constituents. Quite honestly, if you live in Wisconsin and you call a senator from Michigan, you're not going to have a lot of impact. Uh, it's it's just we, we, we are so limited on how we can respond to people. But you have to contact your uh, senators. And then again, that's why I say double down with those groups that are working on organizing our voices, because maybe your senators are both supportive uh, that they're going to vote against uh, these nominations. But if you're working with whatever group is uh, organizing around fighting um, the actual nomination, that helps magnify. They can then take your help and your resources and, and your assistance to help get other people in those important states to actually do those calls. So that, that's what, again, what I recommend all the time is uh, working with those grassroots groups to be even more uh, magnified in that voice. Uh, but re reach out to the senators and let them know your personal reasons, your personal stories. You know, I, I think uh, even an email, you just got to remember, if you mail something to Washington, D.C., we don't get it for three weeks because it has to be screened. So, for anthrax. Yeah, exactly. So, <laughs> you know, that will happen way after these votes. But you can do a quick email, you can do a quick phone call, and, uh, you know, the indivisible guide that's out there that some former yeah. staff put together, I think, is a great resource for people to take a look at and kind of figure out what to do. Yeah, we had Angel Padilla from that group on uh, la yeah. this week and last week, and uh, they, they're just exploding. I mean, you know, so it's they, a, uh, between them and Larry Cohen and Our Revolution, you know, yeah. the, the, the echo of Bernie's campaign, mm -hmm. uh, those two groups are just, uh, Larry, uh, I saw him on Sunday, and, and, and he was telling me how, uh, you know, they, they called a meeting for, I forget the town, but it was like some obscure town someplace. Oregon, you know? I think it was. Yeah, and they were, they were expecting like 40 people or 50, and like, you know, 700 showed up. Yeah. Some, it's like, it, <laughs> you know, everything right. is exploding right now. And, and they're, yeah, uh, metaphorically, and there's there's some you know really great groups out there and, and some really great stuff so so that's that's great advice that that is really really great advice and also uh, I, I wanted to get your thoughts and then and then we'll hit a break and we'll start pay, taking phone calls but I wanted to get your thoughts on the Republican parties proposing a national right to work law uh, the, you know right to work for less is for those of you who don't know is very simple legislation that keeps intact the federal mandate that requires unions to offer lawyers or other services to any employee of a company that has a union in it. This is required by law. The unions must do this. And it's very expensive. It's one of the most expensive things the, lawyer, the unions do. And right to so-called right to work for less laws or right to work laws um, say, you know, the, the individuals no longer have to pay union dues, but the unions are still required to provide services to individuals. This, of course, breaks unions. This is like yeah. passing a law that says that if anybody walks in off the street to a lawyer's office and says, free I service. want you to, yeah. yeah, I want you to, you know, uh, handle my divorce or I want yeah. you to, you know, sue the president for me or whatever. They have to do it and you don't have to pay them. It's bizarre. What are your thoughts on this? I, it's a freeloader law, right? I mean, to allow those people. But this is my argument. When Wisconsin, we were one of the recent states to do right to work. We didn't have it in place for a long time. There was a giant coalition of contractors and unions together, over 400 businesses opposed going to right to work. And the reason really? is they're responsible business owners who understand, you know, my union, uh, Painters and Allied Trades, I've had a union business for now 29 years. So you run a union shop. Absolutely, run a union shop. And out of that, um, we get apprenticeship programs where we get people trained to come in. So there's actually a benefit to that business to have highly uh, qualified, skilled workers to come in from day one that you don't have to go through and train because they've got the union apprenticeship program. So the contractors love uh, how this works out. They've had labor peace and it helps uh, them to be profitable. It's So if, if it's not good for employees and it's not good for responsible business owners, the only people it's good for are the fly-by-night folks that try to undercut those responsible businesses and try to have a, a race to the bottom on wages. That's not good for anyone. That's just a few people going to make some short-term profits. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Congressman Mark Pocan is with us for the hour, taking your calls. And uh, the uh, phone number, 202-808-9925. We'll be back with more of your calls for Congressman Pocan uh, in just a moment. There's a lot going on in the world. If you have you know, any questions about what's going on in Congress, what's going on in the United States, what's going on. <laughs> oh, yeah, this is, this is just like what a wild time we have. We'll be right back. This is the Tom Hartman Program. Congressman Pocan's contact information, pocan.house.gov. You can tweet him at uh, Rep Mark Pocan, R-E-P-M-A-R-K-P-O-C-A-N.